What's up guys, it's Ben with Tactical Nutrition, cutting through the matrix and trying to help us become the best version of ourselves through nutrition, fitness, lifestyle, etc. Anyway, have you ever wondered why there's all these, you know, all this hoopla out there about fake, um, fake sweeteners, fake color dyes, and um, artificial flavorings? And so I'm really going to focus on artificial flavorings because I think it's going to blow your guys' mind when you realize what's really going on here. So we've seen like RFK Jr. going after red food dyes. Eminem, the Eminem conglomerate is fighting him. So there's this usual fight between giant corporations that don't want us digging into their profits. Um... It's a fiasco out there. That's why, that's what the purpose of this channel is, guys, is so that you can take things into your own hands so you don't get wrapped up in the middle of this bull crap. Like, this political, corporate bull crap, which just goes back and forth and back and forth. Because if, if, if you don't know this already, I'm sure most of you guys do. Corporations lobby the government and they get policies enacted and that's why our food supply sucks. And that's why this stuff happens. Generally. You get a few good people out there. A few good men. But, so, here's where I first, my first encountering of artificial flavorings. And if you ever, I will grab the book here. So this is called Fast Food Nation. It's a very popular book. And so first, the anecdote. When I was younger and I didn't know much about nutrition, I would eat those little Yoplait yogurts, you know, like, oh, it's a strawberry yogurt. And it had little chunks of what I assumed at the time were strawberries. And it tasted like strawberries. And then I looked on the back and it said, contains 0% fruit. I just remember thinking to myself, I was like, it contains 0% fruit, but it tastes just like strawberries. Now what, how, how does that work? I didn't know about the artificial flavorings. And so <laughs> in fast food nation, there's an entire, this is a great book if you really want to understand how bad the food industry is. And this is old. It's an old book. I think it was written in, a, let's see here. It was written in, come on, 2001. This book is almost 25 years old. Their tactics have gotten a lot more refined. And as you can see, the obesity epidemics and associated diseases are proving it. So anyway, he talks about, it was on the New Jersey Turnpike. There's like a, there's almost like a one square block where there's these massive manufacturing plants. And they all were creating artificial flavorings, which are in tons and tons of processed foods. And what they did, it's an interesting little science story is they use what's called mass spectrometry, if I'm saying that right. They use a mass spectrometer. Anyone out there knows anything about science might know what I'm talking about. Essentially, what you can do is put any item or organic item, let's say that, or any item actually too, inside of the mass spectrometer. It runs through a process. I don't know how the process works. I don't care. But what it prints out is basically a like graph almost like a I wouldn't know what to call it I've never seen it in person but it's some sort of graph that tells you like all of the components the individual components of whatever you put through it so you can isolate and it's been used they use them sometimes in like crime um, like crime investigations so like if someone's got dirt on their shoe they can put it through the spectrometer and actually see like 
break it down to like what individual like like they can break it down to like where the dirt even came from um you know the particular soil that it was or if there's little pebbles in it they can see what's going on but anyway so when it came to food these uh crafty guys would isolate so if you if you ran a strawberry through it right they would isolate the flavoring and i don't know the exact process but basically what they did was they isolate that flavoring and then they synthesized it and that's where artificial flavorings came from so they they created the exact molecular um synthetic version of the flavoring and then they tested it and this was like this was decades ago that they did this they would there's people out there again the, the story the plot thickens because there's you know there's people out there that are professional like tasters they'll be like professional wine tasters right who they'll blindfold them and they'll give them some wine and they can tell them like exactly where it came from in the world and they have this like super refined olfactory system where they can literally they can isol they can tell what exactly is in anything. So anyway, they're like professional taste testers. And again, I don't really know how that works. And again, I don't really care, but I know they exist. And so they were testing it on these people until they got to the point where the professional taste testers could no longer tell the difference. And that's when things get scary because then they start putting in our food. So back to the Yoplait yogurt, essentially what it was was a bunch of high fructose corn syrup, which is, you know, highly processed, refined sugar. They are 55% um, fructose, 45% um, glucose mixture, highly processed, um, uh, heated, there's bleaching, all that stuff takes out all the nutrients. So it's a bunch of processed sugar. And then whatever else the yogurt is made from, I mean, it may be some kind of processed skim milk cream. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't eaten that crap in a long time and I suggest you don't either. But it's amazing because it tastes just like strawberries, but there's no strawberries in it. So it's, it's literally fooling your body. What will also happen is you'll get a palatant effect, which means that if you eat and your body senses this and it's, oh, strawberries, that's, that's delicious, you should eat more of it. And so you overeat the processed foods. That's one reason why people overeat food. And now they do this all the time with different sodas and fruit drinks like you'll see a lot of like cranberry juice that i remember i used to drink ocean spray cranberry juice i look in the back and it's like contains eight percent fruit juice but somehow it tastes just like cranberry that's how they do it guys and this is extremely dangerous to our health because people a lot of people don't know how to, people are a little more hip to reading food labels nowadays but most people still aren't. So they think, that, you know, they're getting tricked, which is sad because they think they're getting cranberry juice. I thought I was getting great cranberry juice. This is super healthy for me. And then later on, I'm like, damn it. I got fooled by these guys again. So it's like they they put in these artificial sweeteners. They're not sweeteners, but uh, flavorings. And they're all over the place. And they're not just in like yogurts and candies and f sodas and, f and fake fruit drinks and stuff like that. But they're all over the place. And they've done this with almost everything. They can do chicken flavoring, anything. With the mass spectrometer, they can isolate and synthesize almost anything. They can make it taste like chicken. They can make it taste like beef. They can make it taste, I mean... That's why you really have to uh, read your food labels and like really try to get, because if you do get like, or typically if you get organic foods and things like that, more expensive, right? But you're not going to get these artificial flavorings in there. Now, food dyes are another, um, 
another animal altogether. I don't know as much about food dyes. I just know they're not good for you because they've been linked to like hyperactivity in children and they like, they kind of cause like almost like not a stimulant per se, but an excitotoxin is what it's called. The excitotoxins, um, is essentially like they react with like your brain tissue and your nor neurons and your nervous system and things like that. And so that, that's why it's called excito because like it's messing with people's ability to think straight and things like that. So that's a great thing that RFK Jr. is going after these food dyes. There's a way bigger fish to fry here. I won't, I can't even talk about on, on YouTube. I think you might know what I'm talking about here, but that he should be looking at, but I think people should really understand again, how the artificial flavorings can really like, can really wreak havoc on your health. Because again, you think you're getting the benefits of like a fruit or a vegetable. It's generally a lot of times fruits because they're sweet. That's where they can get you. They're not going to do it a lot of times with vegetables. Maybe they, they'll do it with more starchy, sugary vegetables, carrots, um, things like that. I get, I don't know, what else am I even thinking of? You got things like carrots. I mean, what other, what other vegetables do people really drink the juice of that's common? You know, like, I mean, beets, but they don't have But anyway, so... It's generally, again, like fruit, because what they can do then is people naturally know that fruit is, um, contains a lot of natural sugars and nutrients. So they go after fruit, especially because then people will say, well, it tastes like blueberries and it's got that sharpness and sweetness, which they expect if they were to like, they're very crafty because they know like if they make something taste like beef with a beef flavoring, like a MSG type of beef flavoring, fake beef flavor. And like, I mean, then there's a bunch of sugar in it. it it's a kind of people is going to rouse people to like what's going on. They'll be like, what is this beef? Why is sugary beef? Ew, gross. Right? So they go after sugar. Anyway, guys, so what happens is you become nutrient depleted because you think you're getting, you're not getting any of the benefits of fruits and vegetables. You're not getting the antioxidants, the flavonoids, the things like that. So again, fast food nation by what's his name? Eric Schlosser. It actually tells a lot more that that was just one little chapter. This tells about the meat industry. This talks about, the palatants, which I hinted on briefly, which MSG is a palatant. I'll go into another video about MSG itself. But essentially, pal I'll, I'll just give you a teaser, maybe for the next video. Before I give you the teaser, though, the plug. So I do do personalized nutrition coaching. So tacticalnutrition.net. I've got a I've got a better website coming up, but you can. You can email me if you have any questions about doing a nutrition plan. If you need a specialized nutrition plan, the best thing to do is go through Instagram, Tactical Nutrition Fit at Instagram. So, but going into palatins real quick, um, essentially what happened was if you've heard of Chinese food syndrome, it's kind of like a tacky term, but it is a real thing where people feel like they can just eat and eat and eat and eat. That's palatins. That's MSG. That's what it's meant to do. It started out with, with um, livestock. Like, how can we fatten up the cattle and the pigs quicker? Especially pigs. Because pigs will eat anything. So they brought in this uh, chemical called uh, monosodium glutamate. It was, like, developed by the DOD. I mean, it gets very fascinating when you go into who this uh, I think Donald Rumsfeld had something to do with it. it clowns. But so... What it did was it stimulates, um, I might have to go back over and look at the science behind it. I, 
I, I can't quite. It's been years since I looked into it. But essentially, what it does is it 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 makes you want to just keep eating and eating and eating. And these animals would keep eating until literally they explode. Like a human being, after a while, would be like, "Okay, you know, I'm full. I gotta stop." Where right? we're we're a little bit smarter than pigs. And so, well, but if they kept dumping this into their feed, these pigs would just keep eating. And so naturally they got fatter quicker. And so it became very profitable because they could run through the litters quicker and, uh, you know, they could get more product out. I mean, that's what it came down to in the end. And that was one of the starts of when industrial farming really went to crap. But that's all, all I'm going to tell you about MSG in this video. So guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Read your food labels, watch out for the artificial flavorings and the food dyes, and I will see you guys in the next one.